into our next training video, which is um, on 2 Timothy 3, verse 14 to 4, 5. We're going to follow the four questions model, and um, I'd like to encourage you, read the passage, do the exercise yourself, um, prayerfully consider it, and then see how you compare with what I've done. I know there could be more, or is more probably to this passage than this exercise, but at least it'll give you a good idea of what's going on. But following the first question, you know, some of the steps I took, and if I consider the structure, I'm doing the exercise by myself, how has the author organized the text, um, show the structure, how you got there. It seems to me there's two parts, there's um, 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 17, which is really a call to continue in the word personally. Um, and the, re the reason I think it's more personal is because of the address. Um, if you look at that, it says, but as for you, or you, however, continue, it's, it's second person singular. But there's also the repetition of the word scripture or sacred writings, which refers to the Old Testament from which Timothy has learned and which he should continue in. And the focus here for me, it seems to me, if I read it correctly, is on Timothy's own personal walk in the scriptures. And the goal is that Timothy would be equipped for every good work. That's how it ends. And that actually relates, go look at it. It's part of a section that started really in 2 Timothy 2, 20. Um, regarding to become equipped for every good work, and he calls Timothy personally to continue in the word, which he's learned from Paul. But then it continues, and it seems like a slight new section in chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, and there it seems it's a call to continue in word ministry. But you can subdivide it if you want to in verses 1 to 2, 3 to 4, and 5, but 1 to 2 and 5 seem to relate to one another. And the reason for that is in verse 1 to 2, G, um, Paul says, I give you this charge or I charge you. So he commands him again, similar to there, but as for you, continue. But here he says, I charge you. And then what we need to see is whereas verses 14 to 17 is about Timothy continuing in his learning of the scriptures. Verses 1 to 5, chapter 4, Timothy is charged to preach the word or do the work of the evangelist. Verse 2 and 5 so there, it's not so much personal, it's focused on his audience or the church, those outside the church, and interestingly, irrespective of suffering, which you see in verse 5. But the reason Paul gives is quite interesting, because verses 3 to 4 is the reason why he needs to do this, and it's because um, there's a general tendency um, to the opposite, where people will not be preaching the word, or try and live according to it. They'll look for hearers who, or teachers who will give them what they want to hear. And so Timothy's called to faithful ministry in this area, believing it's God's word. But when I look at the context, the context really colors it in even more. Because in chapter 3, verse 1 to 9, that's the next question. How is the meaning of your text informed by its context? If you read for chapter 3, verse 1 to 9, Paul talks about terrible times in the last days. And when you read verses 2 to 9, it's really people living godless lives, rejecting the truth. And this will only worsen, he says in verse 13, because they'll be in the habit of deceiving and being deceived. The opposite of the truth, which is that itching ears idea, that theme that's repeated here in chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. And people desire to live godless lives, contrary to the scriptures, and they will seek teachers that will affirm this. So false teaching and godless living will be rampant, says Paul. In the last days. But conversely, in the midst of all of this, there's Paul's charge to Timothy. He's charged to preach, to continue in learning and to preach the word. It's bracketed actually by his own life. Because in verses 10 to 12, Paul reminds Timothy of my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions and sufferings. These are all themes he'll repeat. Which is what it means, says Paul, to believe and follow Jesus. Verse 12, quite key. And in chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, which is at the end of our section, Paul reminds Timothy that as he, he's reached the end of the race. He, he's, he, he kept the faith and suffered for Christ. It's over now. And so 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 4, 5 is really a call for Timothy in the middle of all this to take up Paul's mantle, personally continuing in the faith in Christ and publicly preaching faith, the faith of Christ despite opposition. And central to this, of course, is the scriptures. But if you look at the context of the entire book, what is clear in the letter is Paul is suffering. That becomes clear in chapter 1. He's imprisoned. 
He has experienced that you see there. He has experienced personal pain of people abandoning the faith. See that in chapter 1, 15, 14. Those who are in opposition to him, from opposition from false teachers. You see that in chapter 2, 17, 4, 14 to 15. Go read those. And he's also awaiting death. He's going to get his crown. Yet in all of this, Paul recognizes that he is merely imitating his Savior, Jesus. Chapter 3, 12, and like Jesus, and he repeats this theme the whole time. He's got the hope of eternal life or salvation in the gospel. Makes it all worth it. You can look at those verses. Now the goal of this letter, it seems, is Paul encouraging Timothy to take up the baton of the gospel. He, he continues to tell him to do this. We see it in our own passage and embrace the same course of action as Paul did which is suffer for the gospel. And throughout the letter, Paul talks about the gospel, which has been revealed in Christ. You see it in chapter 1, and this gospel has been trusted to Timothy. You see that theme there in chapter 1. And Timothy has observed this gospel teaching in life from Paul. That's chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. And Timothy is called to do the same in chapter 2, 14 to 15, chapter 4, 1 to 5, which is part of our section. Unique to our section, though, the one unique thing to see is the reference or Paul specifically pointing out where this gospel is found. It's in the scriptures. Verses 4 to 16 to 17 is unique to our passage and sort of pointing directly. This is the place where you need to go to find this message of salvation. So what's the main idea? It seems to me the main idea, if I read it correctly, is that in spite of opposition and temptation, which are the big problems, God's pastors and teachers and those who listen to them are called to personal growth in and faithful teaching of the scriptures with Jesus at the center, since it is from God. And that seems to me the essence of our passage, what we owe people to bring across. Uh, but how does this text relate to the or anticipate the gospel? There's so many correlations and points to look at. We'll see which ones we highlight in our studies or in the sermon. But Paul reminds Timothy that the scriptures and the apostolic teaching of the scriptures, our New Testament, by the way, that's Paul's teaching, is the way to make you wise to salvation. So in them, the gospel of Jesus, the promise of eternal life, is revealed. So it's really worth delving into the scriptures. Salvation is revealed there in Christ. That's a big connection. Also, it's only if we expose ourselves to the gospel of Jesus, as revealed in the scriptures, that we can be shaped into people who will do every good work. That's a theme here. You can only be shaped to become what you're supposed to be if you expose yourself to the gospel. But notice again, and this is a theme throughout the letter, it's the theme of eternity. Chapter 4, 1. Jesus will judge the living and the dead when his kingdom comes. So what will make you endure present suffering and resist the temptation to follow the crowd and keep with the scriptures as if you keep eternity in mind. That's a powerful message. And I think that in essence is what this letter is about.